When you're cruising down the road and it's storming so hard you can't see a foot past the windshield, you're driving through puddles so deep they drown Godzilla, just do what old Jack Burt does. Pull the Pork Chop Express off to the side of the road and play legendary Big Trouble in Little China. Remember, it's all in the reflexes. <laughs> to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Legendary Big Trouble in Little China. It's a deck building game from Upper Deck, and I'm not going to go over how to play this game. Uh, if you're not familiar with deck building games, I'll have a link up here for a video I did called Deck Building 101, and that will explain the basics of deck building. Uh, if you want more specifics on how the Legendary system is played, I'll have a link for a review I did of the very first Legendary Games Marvel Comics deck building game. Um, and you can check that out. That'll go into the specifics of the Legendary system. What I want to do, what I want to do, excuse me, is talk about Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, this is a base set, all its own, and it comes with its own play mat, which you have here. I don't know how much of that you can see. Uh, the layout is basically the same as in the other Legendary games. Uh, the only real difference, if you look at the city there, there are five spaces where the villains go. Two of those spaces have an arch that say Chinatown, and that's important to this game. A lot of stuff happens in Chinatown. Uh, the box for this game is a little bit smaller than the usual base sets, and you do have to fold this and then roll it up to fit it into the box, uh, which does mean that it doesn't lay very well uh, when you first lay it out to start playing the game it doesn't lay flat because you have to fold it if you're going to keep it in the box uh, so there's that anyway so uh, Big Trouble in Little China I absolutely love this movie it's one of my favorite John Carpenter movies one of my favorite Kurt Russell movies so I was very excited uh, for this game I didn't know how it was going to be because we're talking about one movie as opposed to uh, the Marvel game, which has an entire comic book universe to draw from. Um, and there's also the Legendary Encounters games, which pull from the Aliens franchise, the Predator franchise. There's a new one for Firefly, which I have not played yet, but I will play it and review it. Um, so those have more source material. This is a single movie. Um, but so far, it seems to work. We have four masterminds, so that's not too bad. Uh, there's, I think, a dozen schemes uh, to work through, and you do have plenty of villains and, and heroes and everything, and I'll get into some of those in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So there are some differences between this, besides the obvious differences of character, uh, the characters and everything, uh, as far as play goes, and even setup, uh, there are some differences big differences between this and Legendary Marvel. Uh, one of those, right off the bat, in a regular Legendary, or more specifically Legendary Marvel, your starter deck is uh, consists of eight generic recruit cards, I think they're shield agents, and four generic um, fight cards, which are shield specialists or operatives, something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so you have a total of 12 cards. In this game, you're still going to have a total of 12 cards, but you're going to have six generic recruit, four generic fight, and then each player is going to get two mediocre hero cards. There are, I believe, 24. You shuffle them up. Each player gets two in their starter deck. And I'll show you an example of some of these. Um, since they're essentially replacing the generic recruit cards, they each have one recruit point on them. But then there's a little something extra. So you have things like Long Hauler. It's the mediocre Pork Chop Express card. And yes, the Pork Chop Express is a hero in this game. So you get the one recruit, and then it says plus one fight if there's a villain in the streets. Simple enough. How about the mediocre Jack Burton? He's a jerk. Plus one recruit, of course, and then plus one fight if you have no victory pile. 
So he's not bad at the beginning of the game. Um, but much like your normal generic starter cards, eventually you're probably going to want to get rid of these. Get them out of your deck. Uh, here's Gracie Law, Lawyer. Looking a little bit like Kim Cattrall. Plus one recruit, of course. And then plus one recruit if there's at least one villain in Chinatown. So just some simple things. It adds a little bit extra to your starter deck. And as I said, there's uh, 24. I think there's two of each. So 12, actually 12 different characters. Um, shuffle those up so you never know who's going to get what. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a change. Your starter deck's a little more exciting. Um, <clears throat> just to show you some artwork here, I absolutely love this one. As I said, I'm a huge fan of the movie. If you are a fan of Big Trouble in Little China, you're going to recognize a lot of this stuff. This is the Master Strike card. And that's just some wonderful artwork right there. It's just great. Um, like I said, lots of villains, henchmen, masterminds. Well, four masterminds. I want to show you. these. This is one of my favorite villain groups. It's not all of the, the villains here. Uh, but this is the monster group. So you have uh, the Catacomb Monster. Again, I'm not going to say it every time, but you're definitely going to recognize a lot of this, a lot of these characters. Um, so he's got a pretty interesting ambush effect. Um, and for those who don't know, uh, ambush means when this card comes into play, that ambush effect takes place. Uh, this says, reveal the top card of each player's deck. KO the lowest cost hero or heroes. So if there's a tie, they're all gone. Um... Here's another monster that people will recognize. Gotta love that little guy. And then uh, this one, I don't know where he's from because I don't remember this being in the movie. But uh, it's a bug monster. I love that artwork, though. He's a great-looking monster. I don't recall a bug monster in the movie. But it's been a while since I've watched it. Uh, all right, here's a, a, some more great artwork. This is the Mastermind. Sorceress Lopan, right there. I'm sharing that because I just love that. And we're going to get to Masterminds a little bit later because there's something different in this one. Uh, so I'll share some of the heroes, some of the cards, what they do. Um, let's see. I want to save that one for a little later. Here is uh, Jack Burton's highest cost cards. What old Jack Burton says. There you go. I actually have a t-shirt that has the same design that's on his, but it's packed away somewhere. Or I would have worn that while I was doing this. Uh, but this is, a, this is a nice card. It's got seven fight right off the bat. And then it says, if this is not the showdown, draw a card. Then each other player who reveals a Jack Burton card also draws a card. If this is the showdown, gain plus ten fight if you also play a Pork Chop Express card. Uh, now I'm going to get to what the showdown is in just a few minutes. <clears throat> Let's see, we have the Pork Chop Express. Again, just like to share that. I love that Jack Burton's truck is one of the heroes here. Um, so this is a simple one, mid-level hero. It's plus three fight. And then if you play a tech hero before playing this card, if there are no villains in Chinatown or the bridge at the end of your turn, rescue two bystanders. I've used this to great effect on occasion. We've got Wang Chi, Shake the Pillars of Heaven. Again, fans of the movie should recognize the names on these cards. Uh, this is a four fight, and you get plus two fight for each class of hero you play this turn. So that could be a pretty strong card. Uh, then we're just going to get into some of the other cards that are kind of interesting, do some interesting things. Um, and this is what brings in, you know, some different gameplay from... Legendary Marvel. Uh, first of all, Uncle Chu is the equivalent of Maria Hill in the Marvel game. Uh, there's a stack of Uncle Chews that are always there, ready to be purchased. They cost three. They give you two recruit. But what he adds is, if you do not defeat a villain this turn, you can KO a wound from your hand or discard pile. So that's a little something extra that Maria Hill doesn't do. So he's pretty helpful. Um, and we have some interesting things. Here's Eddie. There's old Eddie there. He gives you plus two fight. 
and then you gain plus one fight for each other card you play this turn that has the word Chinatown on it. So, you know, you get that one, start grabbing up other cards that say Chinatown. Uh, I really like this one. This is Margot. Yeah, I'll call the president. She gives you plus two recruit. And then it says, reveal the top card of the hero deck. If you wish, you may recruit, uh, you may recruit it this turn. If the card you revealed is an Eddie card or a tech card, you gain plus two fight. So that's not too bad, especially for a cost of three. Pardon me while I scratch my eyeball. Uh, son of a bitch must pay. It's a Jack Burton. I like this one. Uh, and this adds to the interaction between players. This is just a plus two recruit, but it says, if you played an instinct hero before playing this card, the opponent to your left must KO a gray hero from their hand. When they do, you gain plus two recruit. Um, I had two of these in my hand and used them to get eight recruit, um, which bought me a really good card. This is one of my favorites. Uh, it's not expensive. It's Egg Shen. He only costs three, but I like it because you have to flip a coin to see what he's going to do for you. And basically, you flip a coin. Heads, you get plus two recruit, and you can KO a card from your hand or discard pile. If it's tails, you get plus two fight. Um, <clears throat> so I like that. It brings that element of chance into the game. Um, there is a little more interaction between players, I believe. Uh, I showed you the one card. There's another Jack Burton card where you uh, pick a random card from the hand of the player on your left. And depending on what that card is, something happens. I'm not going to give away everything that happens in this game. Uh, some of the uh, villains and henchmen in this game uh, are a little... I'm going to say more difficult to fight, but it's... The, Fighting them is a little more complex. They're not necessarily tough, as in they have a lot of fight that you have to generate to beat them, but there are very specific criteria that you have to meet to beat them. Um, so that, that adds a little bit more. Um, and then I mentioned earlier I was going to come back to Masterminds, and on one of the cards it mentioned Showdown. Now the Showdown is not a new concept, but in the Marvel Legendary it is an optional uh an optional thing so what the showdown is when you have your mastermind underneath this card there are four mastermind tactics and when you're playing normal legendary um you, all you have to do is defeat defeat the mastermind four times you basically get rid of those four mastermind tactics and the game ends and everybody wins um so, with the showdown, which is optional in Marvel Legendary, but is part of the game here. It is not optional. It happens. And they said, they say in the instructions, it's because of the nature of the game. It's, um, and the nature of the movie. You know, you have the final showdown between Jack Burton and the villain. So, in this game, there is a final showdown. Once those last four tact or the last four once those four tactics are gone you're going to have the showdown so uh say i beat the last tactic i finish my turn um discard everything i draw a new hand of six cards now the player to my left will play their hand as normal drawing cards generating fight generating recruit but they will not recruit or fight anyone they will simply add up all of the recruit and fight points they have generated with their hand and well they're going to sit on that number that total um because then the next player will do the same thing they will play their uh their hand drawing cards doing whatever they would normally do except for the recruit and fight add up their total and then say there's only three of us so it comes back around to me i play my final hand etc etc and basically, whoever has the highest points, which is a total of your recruit and fight all added together, they get the last card, the actual mastermind card, and can add it to their victory pile. 
And in this case, it's worth six victory points, if you see there in that little red circle. Um, so that can make a big difference. The first time we played this game, um, I would have won, except I lost the showdown, and those six points made the difference. The margin between the person with the uh, highest victory point total and myself was small. Um, so you must do the final showdown. Uh, and I think that covers basically everything I wanted to go over. Um, <clears throat> so again, generally plays just like uh, Legendary Marvel. Obviously, a lot of different things as far as abilities on the cards go. But draw six cards, play them, fight bad guys, recruit new heroes, make your deck stronger, etc. Et I mean, it's a deck building game. That's how they go. Um, I really, really like the artwork. Um, oh, I did forget something. Uh, in the other legendary games, each hero has a deck of 14 cards. So, say we're playing Marvel, um, and I have Wolverine. There's 14 Wolverine cards. There's 14 Star-Lord cards, 14 Iron Man cards. Um, and generally, it's five low-cost cards, five medium-cost cards, three slightly higher, and one big one, something like that. I don't know exactly what the breakdown is. In this game, uh, Jack Burton and Wang Chi have an extra five cards. So they each have 19 cards. Well, you're going to take five of those out. Um, as I said, there's generally there's five, I think, lower cost cards. Well, now you have two sets of five lower cost cards for those two characters. Before you start the game, if you're playing with those heroes, you pick which of those sets to take out. Um, if you play the initial suggested game, when you play for the first time, it tells you you're going to play with Jack Burton, but you're going to leave out the five sleeveless Jack Burton cards. Um, so that's going to add a little bit to the replayability as you mix and match uh, the cards that you use. Uh, and I think that's important because, uh, as I said earlier with um, Marvel, you have a, an entire comic book universe. There's so many expansions for that game. Uh, that it's crazy and it keeps it fresh and they add something new every time. Uh, with the aliens, uh, the legendary encounter aliens, you've got four movies essentially that you're working with. At Predator you have two movies. Firefly you've got uh, the TV show and the movie. Um, I haven't played it yet so I'm not sure they incorporate the movie. We'll see. But uh, they have more source material. This just has the single movie so I don't know that there's going to be any expansions. Um, you know, there's there's not a whole lot to draw from. Uh, but they are, as with all the other Legendary games, they are compatible. You can mix and match. So you can have Wolverine and Star-Lord going up against Sorceress Lopan. Or you can have Jack Burton and Egg Shen trying to take down Magneto. Or Xenomorphs or Predators, however you want to do it. Mix and match. You just have to kind of watch some of the terminology. Uh, usually the instructions will give you a little a little thing that will tell you uh, in Marvel game this term means the same as this term in Legendary Encounters Alien. Um, but they are compatible. So even if there are no expansions for this, you can still mix it with any of the other games and you're going to have tons of replayability if that's what you want to do. So I think that covers it. This video got away from me a little bit. But that is Legendary Big Trouble in Little China. Um, it's a lot of fun. I think if you're a fan of the movie, you'll probably enjoy it more than if you're not familiar with the movie. But there is enough here for someone who's just coming in and maybe just likes the Legendary system or thinks the box looks cool. Uh, I think you can come in and play this and have a good time. Um... And like I said, mix it with the other games if you like. But uh, if you're a fan of deck building games, pick it up. If you're a fan of Big Terminal Little China, pick it up. Um, I recommend it. It, it. it really had a good time. This is going to go into not necessarily super heavy rotation, but I think we're going to play it often enough. Uh, 
So that's it. Um, I'll have a link for the game in the description below. Uh, you know, at least for Amazon, you can pick it up there. Uh, I always go to my local game store and I say support your local game store. So check there first, but you know, I'll have a link for Amazon. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Um, <laughs> normally I say comments are open for spoilers, but since this isn't a book or movie review, I'm not sure that that fits. I suppose, maybe, I mean, if you want to know about more specific cards or things, um, but if we do get into spoiler territory, post a spoiler warning. Um, but please, I'd love to talk a little bit more about this game. Um, <clears throat> so comment away. Please like, share, and subscribe. And that's it for this episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I have been your host, Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.